Um, somewhat perhaps counterintuitively, especially if you've been um, going to some of the different uh, uh, sessions over the past couple of days, I actually think the state of privacy is improving. Um, so I feel that now, uh, one year post Snowden, one year post NSA revelations, um, the issue around privacy uh, on the commercial side in terms of what companies are doing and how much they're surveilling consumers, we, we know a lot more about it now than we did before. And I think the awareness of consumers and the awareness of the public and the awareness of the media has grown tremendously, not just on the government side, but on the commercial side. So, um, you know, I remember, I've been in this space dealing with uh, uh, data brokers and third party surveillers of, of consumers for so many years. Um, like 20 years ago, we brought together a group of data brokers to find out what they're doing and, and how much they know about consumers. And I remember so well that one of their representatives said, you know, the secret to our business is not so much how much we know, but just making sure that consumers don't know about it. <laughs> it was, no. they, said he, they said that the, the, the key for them was dumbing it down. And so a data broker, just to be clear, is, is a company that amasses your, as, as much data as they can about you. Right, you can so we just did, I mean, just very briefly, we just did a study about data brokers. Data brokers have been around for a very long time. They are behind the scenes companies that are collecting information about consumers, both offline, going to government, you know, town offices and government sources and, and magazine subscriptions and things like that, but also now much more online information. They're collecting um, massive amounts of information. So some of the data brokers have 3,000 data points about each uh, consumer in the U.S. that they have information about. And they have information about just about every U.S. consumer. Some of them uh, take a look at uh, 3 billion transactions per month. Yeah. So we're talking about massive amounts of computing, massive amounts of, of information that get put into profiles about consumers. And I know we'll talk about that uh, uh, some more. But I do think there's a lot more awareness about that, and I think that that's really good. You know, one of the things, though, that I want to say that where I think we have the biggest challenge and why I say things are getting better, but I still think there's a ways to go, we have a lot of great laws in this country dealing with privacy, but they were developed in the 1990s. They were developed when privacy, oh, sorry, when data kind of flowed in silos. So you had credit reporting agencies, or you had banks, or you had uh, uh, you know, in entities that were dealing with children's information in a sort of mi you know, minor way. And then, so we had, and, and, and you had HIPAA. Um, health information held by doctors and held by insurance companies and whatnot. So you had these laws developed that were very siloed and said, if you fall into one of these spaces, you had to do a lot more to protect information. But now what we're seeing, especially with big data, especially with the ease of computing and whatnot, is data doesn't recognize these silos anymore. Data is flowing much more freely. Not, it, not, it, 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 there's a lot of health information out there, not just in doctor's offices, but even entities like Target was able to figure out whether its customers were pregnant or mm -hmm. not. And developing sensitive health information, which when it became known, kind of became an interesting and, and troubling issue. So information's flowing outside of these silos. So I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest challenges now is to figure out how do we deal with the information that isn't behaving the way it used to behave back in the 1990s. And the issue is that it